Okay, so I have uh, shared my screen. You'll be able to see that in a few seconds. Okay, so Mika, let's start off with this question. Okay, yesterday we discussed this, but I wanted to talk about it again. Okay, because we only discussed first two parts. Okay, now the curve C with the equation y equals f of x is shown in figure four. Okay, so this is a curve. We can see that the curve C. So we have some properties of curve C. It has a single turning point. Well, that is very obvious. This is the only turning point of the curve, and that turning point is a maximum point with these coordinates, right? So x is four and y is nine. This crosses the coordinate axis at only two places. Okay, so it is basically uh, touching the x-axis at minus three zero. And the y-axis at zero six, and has a single asymptote with equation y equals four. Okay, that is obvious. First part is state the equation of the asymptote to the curve with equation y equals f of minus x. Everything would be same. The only difference is that this time we have minus x. So you said, you told me yesterday. That whenever we have minus x, our graph would be flipped. Perfect. That is hundred percent correct. So just imagine if this curve is flipped on the other side, and if I print it on the left hand side, what am I going to get? I would get the same thing. Let me just try drawing it nicely. Okay, so I am gonna get the same type of thing. There's something of this type, right? Some exact same thing, but on the left side. And this point is telling us that still y equals four would be the asymptote. So the equation would be y equals four. Anything that you have not understood so far? Okay. um the second part state the coordinates of the turning point on the curve with equation y equals f of x by 4 this time around nothing is going to change our turning point would still be 4 9 but the fact that this time we have x by 4 in order to get 4 9 we must have 16 instead of x because 16 divided by 4 will give me 4 right so think about it this way since we have x by 4 we will multiply this value four times because now i have 1 by 4x 1 by 4x means if i will have 16 equals x only then i will get 4 and 9 would stay same because we are not doing anything with y okay so the points would be 16 and Nine. Okay, clear so far. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So let's talk about this. Okay. See, given that the line with equation y equals k. First thing is first. How would the line y equals k look like? It would be a horizontal line, right? It would be a horizontal line. Of this type, but let's see what the question is. So far, we have just uh, read y equals k, and we know that it is going to be a horizontal line. But what exactly are we doing with that line? So, given that the line y equals k, where k is a constant, intersect C. C is the curve at exactly one point. State the possible values for k. Okay. Now, C is the curve, the curve which we have been discussing. This curve uh, on figure four, and they want us to find a line with y equals k such that this line intersects this curve at one point only. So, can you guess? Anything less than y is equal to four. Very well done. Excellent. Very good. So, okay, uh, less than four. If this would be the line. Even still, the intersecting point would be one because they claim y equals four to be the 
asymptote and we know that yeah so that would also be included right so y less than equal to 4 any line over here over here would cut the graph at one point only that's it right uh, no and the turning point as well i think excellent very good yes because if we have a line at this point that is y equals 9 even then our line y equals 9 and the curve would intersect at one point only so the answer would be the answer would be y equal uh, no we will not write down y obviously that is for our um, understanding the question is to state the possible values of k so k would be 9 or k would be less than equal to 4 right yes perfect okay um right let's talk about the d part then the curve c is transformed to a new curve that passes through origin okay the curve which we already have it was not passing through origin let me just rub all this it was not passing through origin but now the curve has been transformed in such a way that it is passing through origin given that the new curve has equation y equals f of x minus a state the value of the constant a okay so think about this whenever we subtract something with the function or basically with y equals something our graph moves these many units down right do you know this concept for example yeah yeah if it's okay. outside the f of x then uh, yeah exactly it's positive, it's it's opposite, it's exactly. down it's negative excellent okay so it is negative it means it will move down and in order to transform the curve such that it passes through the origin we need to move this point to this point that is the origin so this is positive 6 we need to come 6 units down that is why we have minus a this means a would be 6 because um the same curve with y equals f of x minus 6 y equals f of x minus 6 will take this graph 6 units down and this point this point then would be at the origin right yes so this means that the value of a would be 6 and positive 6 not negative 6 because we already have negative sign here okay and the second part write down an equation for another single transformation of c that also passes through origin okay this was one way of transforming the curve now they want us to transform the curve in another way but the concept is same again it should pass to the origin so let's look at our curve okay initially we played with this in fact they played with this and we want another transformation so this is the only point which we can play with we can move this point three units to the right just so this point is cutting um, the curve at origin right this point passes through origin so how do we move our graph three units right by doing what by uh, mm -hmm. by adding three inside the function subtracting three okay it is other way around we have to subtract three for this oh yes yes sorry I okay forgot. yeah so it is y equals f of x minus 3 because this way whenever we are subtracting something our graph will move three units or whatever units we are subtracting to the right side so anything that you have not understood in this question this was a very good question i would say and yesterday we were not able to discuss it properly but today i wanted to talk about it nicely so is this understood uh, yes any other thing which you would like to ask uh, about this concept or stuff like that um yes okay yes, yes. so miss i just want to confirm so inside the function yeah when there's a change mm -hmm. 
you multiply the x with the uh, reciprocal of the with the co of the coefficient, right? Okay, uh, one by four. You are talking about the uh, this part, like this type of yeah, change. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah. Okay. For example, yeah. if it was one by three, so would you do three times four then? Yes. 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 Exactly. But and and you know, try for thinking about the concept. Why is it like that? Because our turning point still would be four nine. But in order to get four here, you need to multiply uh, one by four with sixteen. And if it was one by three x, in order to get four here, you need to multiply it with twelve. So x would be twelve in that case, right? This is why yes. we multiply. Okay. And uh, let's say if it was two x, so then it you would make it half. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Yes. Okay. That's it. Okay. Well done. Uh, let's talk about the ninth question. Okay. So what do we have? Okay, the equation, this, whatever the equation is, where C is a constant, we have C in it, has no real roots, okay? Find the range of possible values of C. Okay, now this is a question and we have no clue because, you know, whenever we have range, range means that there should be some inequality, right? So the question is not about solving this or doing it that way. You need to first make some inequality by using whatever they have told you and then find the values of C through that range, okay? They have told you that this equation right here has no real roots. And we, although we know how to solve linear equations, quadratic equations, cubic equations, but still the concept of no real roots is only seen in quadratic equations that we say that the discriminant, that is b square minus 4ac, is less than 0, right? Do you, do you agree? Yes. And this equation apparently does not look like a quadratic equation. So we need to do something just so it becomes a quadratic equation. And what that something would be just simplifying this. And you will see automatically this would become a quadratic equation. So this yes. is 3 by x plus 5 minus 2x plus c. Okay, I'll take LCM and I will have x 3 plus 5. And you know, steps are important because it is a 7 mark question, right? 5x yes. equals minus 2x plus c. Okay, now I can take this x to the uh, right side. This is 3 plus 5x equals minus 2x square plus cx, okay, now I'll just transform it a bit. It would be 2x squared plus 5x minus cx, minus CX plus 3 equals 0. And I need to just find my ABC just so I can use this concept. So it is 2x squared. I will take x common just so I have my B. Because B is the coefficient of X equals 0. Okay, now A is the coefficient of X squared, that is 2. B is the coefficient of X, that is 5 minus C. And C is 3, right? Any confusion so far? No, miss. Okay, perfect. So now we have to use the concept. Now, this is our quadratic equation. And since this equation does not have any real root, it means that the discriminant would be less than zero. So B square minus four AC would be less than zero. What is B? B is five minus C square minus four into two into three less than zero. And this is turning out to be five minus C square less than uh, 24, sorry, it would be 24. Just give me a second.
Okay. So it would be twenty four. Okay. And Mikal, how do we solve inequalities? So we would uh, square square root both sides. Okay. So this way I will get five minus c less than plus minus under root 24? Yes. Okay, you are right and wrong. Like, yes, your concept is right, but low. Okay, let's let's um, continue with this, okay? So this okay. way, I am getting 5 plus under root 24 less than C, and I am getting 5 minus under root 24 less than c right and this does not make sense the fact that c is greater than this value and again c is greater than this value this does not make sense right we need a range and these two ranges are not um you know satisfying each other this if you yeah. talk if we talk about it in number nine let's say that this is five minus under root 24 and this is 5 plus under root 24. So this range is telling us that 5 is greater than this, uh, C is greater than this, and then the other one is telling us that it is this, right? So this is not right. We need to work about it. We need to do something about okay. it. So we have to change the sign of inequality, okay? So this means that Yes, you were correct. Obviously, we need to get rid of c square. And for that, we will take a square root, but we need to change sign as well. So we write it this way. Okay. 5 minus c is less than under root 24. And 5 minus c is greater than minus under root 24, right? Obviously, this would make sense that this is a big number. If 5 is, 5 can be less than this and 5, um, 5 minus C can be less than this and 5 minus C can be greater than this, right? But it cannot hold other way around, right? Because this is a small number. This term can be greater than this and this term can be less than this, right? Uh, did you understand yes. this? Okay. Yes, yes. So 5 minus under root 24 is less than C and 5 plus under root 24. Okay, so we can just combine these two. C is greater than 5 minus under root 24 and C is less than 5 plus under root 24. Also, you can write down under root 24 as 2 root 6. 5 minus 2 root 6 less than C. Less than 5 plus 2 root 6. Okay, so this would be the answer. Now, um, in this question, as soon as we came across this word, you should immediately um, think about some inequalities because you only get range when there's an inequality, right? And obviously we had to make up our own inequality using this concept. And the only concept about no real roots comes from this thing that discriminant would be less than zero. So we had to find A, B, C, insert in this inequality and we got the range for C. So did you understand this question? Yes. Anything that you would like to ask? Uh, I don't, don't think so. Okay. So let's talk about the 10th question. Okay. This is the 10th question. A sector A O B. Do you know what sector is? This is your circle. Yeah, yeah. It's like a piece of the circle. Yeah, pizza type of a thing. Pizza slice of yeah. pizza, whatever you call it. Okay. And let's say this is theta. Okay. A sector AOB of a circle with center O has radius R centimeters 
and angle theta radians okay so we have been told that the angle is theta radians this is important given that the area of the sector is 6 cm square and the and that the perimeter of the sector is 10 cm show that we have this okay forget about how to get this let's use whatever we have been told and see if we can get this or not so let's use this first area of sector basically would be theta over 2 pi why 2 pi and why not 360 because theta is in radians whenever our theta is in radians we divide it by 2 pi if it is in degrees we divide it by 360 multiplied by pi r square and this is equal to 6 we have been told okay so pi and pi would be cancelled and theta r square equals i can take this 2 to the other side and this would be 12 so this is one equation which we are getting did you understand this equation okay and that the perimeter of the sector so what would be the perimeter it would be uh, uh, okay so it would be radius plus radius it would be radius this radius this radius and this arc length okay and how do we find arc length by r theta do you know that formula r theta yeah 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 okay and this equals 10 okay now we are getting 2r plus r theta equals 10 so these are my two in uh, these are my two equations which i need to use in order to get this so if i try solving these two equations simultaneously what i can do is i can just make a uh, theta the r the subject so i am going to get 2 plus theta equals 10 and r is 10 divided by 2 plus theta okay this is r and i can use this r in this equation just so everything is in terms of theta and so i can get my answer 2 plus theta and this is square equals 12 okay and this is theta multiplied by 100 Equals twelve multiplied by. I will take this two plus theta square to the other side. This is hundred theta equals twelve into two. Uh, okay. I cannot do twelve into two. I need to first open this up. So this will become four, like a square. Plus two ab that would be four theta plus theta square. Did you understand this? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Hundred theta equals forty eight plus forty eight theta plus twelve theta square. Okay. Now I can just do it this way. Zero equals twelve theta square minus Forty-eight theta minus hundred theta will give us minus fifty-two theta plus forty-eight. Okay, now I have this thing, so I can just rewrite this as three theta. Yes, and uh, uh, yeah, but I need to take four common, and then I will get three theta square minus thirteen theta plus. Forty-eight equals zero, and obviously that is equal to this, right? I can take four to the other side. So we have shown this. Did you understand this? Yes, miss. Okay, and this is the second part. Find the possible values of r and theta. This is easy because we can directly use this uh, equation to find theta. Once we have our theta, we have this equation to find r. So let's do that. We have. Three theta square minus thirteen theta plus forty eight equals zero. And how do we find theta? 
Okay. Hello. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we just. Uh, uh, this this uh, should be this 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 should be twelve. Sorry, when I have taken four common, this should be twelve. This is why I was wondering that why is it so weird? Okay. So this is twelve. This should be twelve. Okay. Now think of two numbers such that when you multiply them, you get thirty six theta square, and when you add them, you get minus thirteen theta. So nine and four, right? Yes. Yes. Minus nine and minus four. Very good. Okay, so I can take three theta common, theta minus three, minus four common, theta minus three. These two are same. We are going in the right direction. Three theta minus four is a factor, and theta minus three is a factor, and this implies that theta is four by three, and theta is three. Okay. Right now, the question was to find theta and r. Once we got our theta, we need to use this equation. R equals ten by two plus theta to find r. So using this theta first, I will get r equals ten by two plus four by three, and this will give me r equals three. And if I use theta equals three, this one, I will get two plus three five, and this implies r will be two. So I am getting this, and I am getting r equals two for theta equals three. So did you understand this? Yes, yes. Then how you got? Uh, please, repeat. Uh, please repeat your question. Uh, could could you just go down for a second? Yeah, sure, sure. The when you calculated ten over two plus four over three, how did you get the three to be? Or did you put in the calculator? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, just check that. It should be r equals three. Yeah, I know. Did you do it mentally or did you do it in the calculator? Yeah, yeah I did that on calculator, obviously. Ah, oh, okay. I thought you did it. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Like you can do it mentally as well. That should not be an issue. Do you want me to do it mentally? No, no. Like you, uh, you did it quick, so fast. So I thought uh, you okay. did it mentally. So I was yeah, no. Actually, you. before before uh, teaching, I make my notes. So I use the calculator for all the calculations, just so I'm able to do things quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so uh, is this understood? Yes. Yes, it is understood. Okay. So let's talk about. The eleventh question. Okay. Uh, a part is on the diagram one. Sketch the graphs of. Okay, let's talk about this graph. Y equals x into three minus x. Okay, so how do you sketch such graphs? Uh, it is y equals x three minus x. So we need to sketch y equals x three minus x. So one thing is clear that it would be a parabola. Right, because if I expand it, I am going to get x square. This equals three x minus x square, so this is going to be a parabola. And let's talk about the shape first. Like, would it be this type of a parabola or this type of a parabola? It would be. It would be. Like a U. Like a U or other way around. Think about. No, like a U. Oh, sorry. Like this. No, no, the sad one. Because we have minus x square, right? Yes, yes. So this means that it would be other way around. Okay, very good. ठीक है. This is good. So it would be of this shape. Okay. And whenever we are plotting a parabola, what what other things do we need to keep in our mind? That x intercepts. Yes. Okay. So when we talk about x intercept, we need to think of values of x when y is zero. So if I put zero here, I am going to get this thing. I have two factors being multiplied equal to zero. How do I interpret this? That x would be zero, and three minus x would be zero, and this implies x would be three, right? Yes. So this would be a point, and then x equals three would be a point, and it would be another way around type of u. So this should be the Curve of y equals 
x, three minus x. Right? Any questions? Uh, I know this. Okay. Let's talk about the other one now. So this is the second one. Y equals x into x minus two into five minus x. Okay, so it is y equals x into x minus two into five minus x. Okay, so we have three factors. This means that it would be a cubic curve. Do you know how to plot cubic curves? Yes, miss. Okay, and this particularly is minus x cube, right? Because x into x is x square, and x square into minus x will give us minus x cube. So it is negative cubic, right? Yes. So okay. So if it is, down. yeah, it would be something of this type, right? Yes. Okay, but what exactly? Again, the roots or the intercepts of x are x equals zero. X equals, x equals two, two. And, and x equals five very good so zero and then we have if this is three then this would be two this is three this should be four and this should be five so it would be a sketch Of this type, right? Okay, now again, the question was to sketch. The question was to sketch. So obviously, it could be that you are getting this, or it could be that someone makes it this type of a thing, right? This should not matter because the basic concept is clear. That it is for minus x cube, and these should be the x intercepts, right? Obviously, every student is going to make it in a different way because they did not give you a proper, um, you know, grade and stuff like that. So, is this okay? Uh, yes. So this is for y equals x, x minus two, five minus x. Okay. So minus x. Yes. Okay, now this graph is very important because we will be using this in other parts. Okay, so this and this is clear. Let's talk about the B1, the B part. Okay, show, show that the X coordinates of the points of intersection of this and this are given by the solutions to the equation this. Okay, forget about the graph. Let's talk about the second part. Now we have two equations and they are talking about the points of intersection. So they are saying show that the x coordinates of the points of intersection are given by the solutions to the equation this. So we know that we can just solve these two equations simultaneously and there would be a point when we come across this type of an equation, right? Yeah. And how do we solve things simultaneously? Yeah. By simply equating, because this is y and this is y. So I will just simply equate, right? Yes. So this would Miss, be- Miss, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. So this would be y equals y. So one by is, x into 3 minus x and the other one is x into x minus 2 5 minus x okay, minus okay. okay. and um, never ever try cancelling this x with x why because although you can but the thing is that you will miss you will basically convert a cubic equation to quadratic equation then and you will get correct roots, but you will not get every root, right? So the fact that we have x here means that this should be a cubic um, equation. And if I cancel out these two x's, I will not be having anything cubic. I will have a quadratic equation, right? So yes. I need to multiply it. 3x minus x squared equals x squared minus 2 
x and then we have another factor that is 5 minus x. Then I have 3x minus x square equals 5x square minus x cube, x cube minus 10x plus 2x square. Okay. Now we need to simplify things. So in order to simplify, I can take everything to the right side. 0 equals minus x cube plus 5x square plus 2x square plus x square, this x square, then minus 10x and minus 3x. 0 equals minus x cube plus 8x square minus 13x. Okay, now I have x multiplied by something this means that i need to take minus x common and i will have x square minus 8x plus 13 and obviously i can rewrite it as x into x square minus 8x plus 13 equals zero so i need to rub this extra bracket and this should be the case right did you understand this yes yes uh it's clear uh, yes yes okay uh, my mic is okay so this is the third uh, part the point p now there's a point p that lies on both curves. Which both curves? The curve if we plot it on diagram one. Okay. Given that P lies in the X coordinate. Now, Mikal, this should be clear that if P lies on both curves, it means that it would be basically a point that is being shared, right? So it would be an intersection, intersecting point and it is in the first quad quadrant so what do you think about it it's going to be a positive x value and positive y value very good and which value exactly like can you uh, particularly or specifically tell me any value on the graph uh, the one over there the two the one that intersects at two three this one like uh, Yes, that one. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Because if it is being shared by two, uh, both the graphs, it would be an intersecting point. It is on the, in, in the first quadrant. So that is the only option. Okay. And how do we find that? How do we find that? So we need to um, find solve using the, algebra. Yes. Solve what? Solve this, right? And yes. this will give us x equals 0. We are not interested in that. x square minus 8x plus 13 equals 0. Okay, so we are interested in this. Since 13 is a prime number, we cannot make factors and then think about it. So let's just directly use the quadratic formula. a is 1, b is minus 8, and c is 13. The formula is x equals minus p plus minus under root b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Let's just insert the values. x would be 8 plus minus under root 64 minus Four into thirteen divided by two, and if you find these values on calculator, you will get x equals four plus under root three, and x equals four minus under root three. Now, which is the value, Mikal? Which value should we pick up? We are getting two values. Like we, in fact, we are getting three values. X equals zero was also a value. So, what value are we interested in exactly? we are interested in this x coordinate. So it is not x equals 0. 
and it is not x um, equals 4 plus under root 3. Sorry, it, uh, wait a second. Obviously, it is not this one. If I draw it properly, I, I can destroy it this way. It will go on like this. And this curve right here, let me just redraw it because only then you would be able to see the third point. Because obviously, if you are getting a third intersection point, it means that there would be three intersection points, right? So it would yes. be from here to here. And then it's going down like that. So this is obviously uh, five. So this is also um, an intersection point. But we are only interested in the point which is in the first quadrant quadrant that is this one okay so x equals 4 plus under root 3 is the x coordinate of this point right yes. so if it is not x equals 0 if it is not x equals 4 plus under root 3 it would be x equals 4 minus under root 3 because that is the x coordinate of this point so it is x equals 4 minus under root 3. And what was the question? The question was to the question was to find the exact coordinates of P, coordinates of P. So we need y value as well. In order to find y, you can either use this or this, any of the equations. Let's use the simple one. Let's use y equals x. 3 minus x. So if we substitute the value of x, we will get y as minus 7 plus 5 under root 3. So did you understand this question completely? Uh, yes, I did, miss. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about the last question. Okay, this is the 12th question and the last question of this paper. So let me zoom in a bit. The curve for the equation y equals f of x with x greater than zero passes through the point this. Okay, given that dy by dx equals 3x under root x minus 10x to the minus 1 by 2. Find the equation of the tangent to the curve at P. Okay, the stop. In order to find the equation of tangent, we know that it would be an equation of straight line in this form. It Even if they wouldn't have told us, this should Still, we understood that equation of any tangent is just like equation of any straight line. That is y equals mx plus c. And in order to find this equation, we need two things. We need m and we need c. So m is what? m is basically dy by dx, right? And in order to find the exact value, we will use this point because we are interested in finding out the tangent at point P. So we want the gradient at point P. So gradient at point P would be calculated by dy by dx at point P, 4 minus 2. So let's do that. M would be 3 into 3. Under root 4 would be 2 minus 10 by under root 6, that uh, under root x, that is 4, so it would be 2. And this is nine into this uh, this is four. This is four. So it would be twenty-four 
minus 5, that is 19. So did you understand that why I'm finding M and how I'm finding M? Uh, yes, I decided. Uh, sorry? Yes, yes, I understood. Okay, okay. Right, so this is M. I got M. I need C. In order to find C, I have this point and I have M equals 19. So I will use Y equals 19X plus C and the point 4 minus 2. So Y is minus 2 and X is 4 plus C. So C is turning out to be minus 78. Now I have M and C. I just need to Rewrite everything with the exact values 19x minus 78. And this is the equation of tangent at the point P, right? Okay. So this should be clear. And the next question is find f of x. So how do we find f of x, Mikal? The integrate. Very good. Okay. So whenever we integrate the derivative with respect to x, on both sides, this will give us y and this we need to solve. Okay, so let's integrate this. Okay, so we have dy by dx equals um, 3 x under root x minus 10 x to the minus 1 by 2. Let's just write it in a more simplified version just so we can integrate it easily. Okay. x into under root x will give me what? When bases are same, I can write it as x multiplied by x to the power 1 by 2 yes. minus 10 x to the minus 1 by 2. Again, when bases are same and they are being multiplied, we add up the powers with one base. So it would be 1 plus 1 by 2. I am doing this just so I am easily able to integrate this function. And this will give me yeah, yeah. 3x to the 3 by 2 minus 10x to the minus 1 by 2. Okay. Now this is my dy by dx. In order to find my a function f of x or y since y equals f of x it is the same thing i need to integrate both sides of my derivative with respect to x so this will give me i can just do it this way so integration of one with respect to y will be y equals and now i can integrate it so it is 3 x to the power 3 by 2 is 1.5. 1 1.5 plus 1 is 5 by 2. It is 5 by 2. I need to divide it by the same power so I can multiply it by 2 by 5. Then I have minus 10 x to the power minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 will be 1 by 2. So I can multiply it by 2 plus C because I am integrating it. So finally, I will get y equals 6 by 5 x to the power 5 by 2 minus 20 x to the power 1 by 2 plus C. And are we done, Mikal? Like, is this the answer? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, yes. This could have been the answer, but since they want us to find f of x, when they give us question, they don't um, give us the question with constants, right? So we need to find the value of constant using this point, 4 and minus 2. Never ever forget that, right? So oh, we okay. have the point 4 and minus 2. The value of y is minus 2. 2 is equal to 6, 5, and then substitute the x. Yes, it is 4, 5 by 2, minus 20. Under root 4 would be 2 plus c, okay? So this will basically give me 
C as, just give me a second. Yep. This will give me C as minus 0 0.4, like you can just do everything. It would be minus two plus 40 minus four to the power five divided by two is 32. So it, you need to subtract six by five multiplied by 32. Let's just do it instead of writing it directly. Okay. And this will give me minus two plus 40 minus 38.4 that is minus 40.4 plus 40 equals c so c is minus 0 0.4 right so whatever we got yes. from the first part we just need to write the value of c y is 6 by 5 x to the power 5 by 2 minus 20 x to the 1 by 2 minus 0 0.4. Okay, so did you understand this question completely? Yes, yes, I did. Know. Okay, so we still have time. What, what should I like teach you? Any question which you want me to do again or stuff like that? Uh, no, Miss. Okay, let's, let, let's have a look at all the questions which we have discussed today. Just so if something hits your mind, you can stop me and ask me. Did you understand this concept? Uh, whenever you are finding the range in case of inequalities, the change of sign. Yes, yes, now I got it. Okay. So, okay, that is pretty much it. This is what we have done. Wait, let me just stop the recording and then you can ask me.